Alrighty, we have a video request from either John Doe or Jean Doe asked in the comments of one of the other videos. Say, can you do a video on your harness belt, tools, etc.? And more than happy to. I was hoping I was able to answer some of the questions that you had in the comments, but I'm also glad to do a video for you and anyone else that would like to know about this stuff. For me, my tools will vary than just a regular iron worker because I am a welder in the iron workers area, but I do fit beams together. I'll do that stuff as well. I don't have all the tools that the guys that just purely walk the beams do, but I have some of them. But if you're looking for stuff that the welders in the iron workers area use, I will have some of that. Everyone's different. Not everyone's going to have the same tools. Um, so yeah, we'll get started in it. First things first, harness. It's always a mess. You set it down, you pick it up, it seems like someone just put in a tornado for you. So I don't necessarily buy the super expensive harnesses. Yes, I am a big fan of buying quality stuff so that it'll last you. But also if you're a welder, it will start to eat through this, the different spatter. Especially for me, I have to do very awkward positions for welding. I have to be upside down sometimes, especially on some of the high rises that I was working on. I'd have my apprentices holding my legs while I was upside down welding on stuff. And any sparks or hot spots that I would be up against, it will start to eat away. And once it does that, you want to ditch it. You don't want to have something that's wearing down, cut through. I've seen iron workers with it. Best thing to do is before you throw it away, get your either box cutter or knife out and you cut it so no one can use it because folks will go dumpster dive and find it and start using it even though it's unsafe. So, for this, I bought it as a set. I didn't go out and buy individual pieces. Probably would have been a good idea. It's super basic. It doesn't have all the fancy clips and all. So it just has the simple pieces that fit through. Now, yes, it's loose and I've had Different foremen come up to me, different safety guys. You're supposed to have it nice and tight so that if you fall, blah, 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 blah. Yes, normally you would do that. But for me, when I'm at work and I'm welding, I have my leather jacket over this and I'm either hanging off a building, I'm upside down, I'm doing backflips while welding just about. I mean, it can't be super tight, otherwise I would never get any work done. So you have these critters. I love these because it has the safety on it so you can't just open it you have to engage the safety and then you can put it out clip it on something and you're good to go it can't just come off if someone bumps it so i love those and it's super basic it just fits through underneath and it clips on so nothing too special about that it's nice and easy it comes off nice and easy that's what you want for break time. You don't want to be spending half your break trying to figure out how to take off your tools. So I wouldn't necessarily know any particular brand that I would say is the best for harnesses. I would get a good, sturdy, basic rig if you're going to be welding. I'm not one of those guys that just walks the beams all day, so I don't quite know the best brand for that. I know there's some that will be about $900 out there, and they're awesome. I just can't recall that at the moment. Whatever works in your area... You want something that has some good reach. Uh, if you're going long distances on beams, you'll want yo-yos that go a while. You don't want a small yo-yo like what I have because more often than not, I'm not going super long distances without a safety wire that I can just hook it to, walk on the beam, hook it to another safety wire and away I go. Um, I wouldn't recommend walking in beams that you can't hook off to. I've done it, it it's not the most fun because you fall, you're dead. Uh, just hook off on all your safety stuff and yeah it, it is nice and thick but if it's getting a little wear on it if I get too much more wear on it I'm just gonna cut it and throw it in the trash so no one else can use it uh, Duratec mini is whatever this thing called the uh, if you are having a hard time when I started out it was always hard to find the spot in the back to hook off the I think it's 40 foot yo-yos. 
or 30 foot, whatever OSHA regulates it as, I would use this critter. So you tie this through this knot. So that's what this piece is basically. And you can use this to take off. I was having that on there, demonstrate to someone else. You put it through, you can either do that. You can do different things. I wouldn't recommend tying off to this piece. I've seen people do that. That's no bueno, in my opinion. You want to feed this through, and then this holds on there, and then you hook off your large yo-yo to this. So, anywho. I can't say too much on harnesses other than get a good one. You don't want to buy a cheapo one that's made for falling minor distances and low amounts of weight. If you have all your tools on you, and you're a good build, you're gonna weigh quite a bit. Anyone will. Even if you're of light weight, if you got a good amount of tools on you, you're gonna weigh quite a bit and you want something that's gonna stop you from falling. You don't wanna be falling out of your harness, you don't want it snapping, and you want good yo-yos. You also wanna inspect your yo-yos. So if it, you're stretching out on it, and you had someone welding near you, and it starts feeding through this, and it falls, or you fall, it will snap. You don't want that. Uh, seen people fall, not fun. They either get seriously messed up or they're dead. So get good harnesses. For my tool belt, I love Clean Klein. I've heard it pronounced both ways. I normally go with Klein tools. That's the way I pronounce it. I know some people say it's clean. I, it's not clean, it's dirty. See, uh, it's Klein, the way I go with it. Uh, it's used a lot by iron workers. Linemen, we both use it to a great extent. I like the quick release version. So, it will mess up your safety vest if you wear it like I do. I really don't care because I go through safety vests a lot being a welder. So, you have your little tab out. So, just say you had a really bad Taco Tuesday and it's the middle of the day and you're heading to the blue room. Yank this thing and you can just drop your tools. It's off. So I love the quick release. So if you're in a bad spot, if beams are falling, and you're caught by your tool belt. You don't want to be fiddling trying to undo little gadgets and all. So that's the way I roll with that. So to dissect the bag a little bit, or bags, belts, and all, I bought it as a set of. Uh, I think it was more of a pick and choose sort of thing. If you go to the store, you say, I want these bags, you want all this, and you buy it as a set, and you get a little special discount. Some places are different. It just depends on what you can find in your area or what you can find online. Make sure you get good quality bags. You don't want that newer synthetic stuff. I get the old fashioned canvas stuff. I love the canvas. It holds up great, especially for welding. And if you're brushing up against the beams as an iron worker, it's not gonna tear. Uh, some of the bags I have had had huge tears because I put them there. I cut them on purpose, which was no easy task because some of the tools, they weren't just fitting perfectly, so I had to open it up. But start off, again, I don't walk the beams as much as other iron workers do, so I don't have those long, I call them pry bars. I know they're not pry bars. I just call them that because I don't care. That's not my department. I will carry my chipping hammer. And it looks a little hokey because I was using it at work and my handle, wood handle broke. And I didn't like being in a little bit of a lurch. So I just found a junk piece of rebar that was being tossed in one of the dumpsters, a few dumpsters we had there. And I just welded it on. It don't have to look pretty, it just has to work. And it does work. And it's nice because it's extra long, extra leverage. And I can just be around all day and I don't have to worry about it breaking no more. So, for the iron worker that was commenting in the comments of one of the other videos, they said to get, looks like spud wrenches, but they didn't specify, so they actually bought a 10 inch instead of a 16 inch. I've been in the same spot, that's why I was starting to make these videos, because it really sucks when they tell you just to buy one tool, and there's about a dozen of them out there, or there's two of them and you buy the wrong one. I've completely been there. I, it sucks because you go to the job site, you think everyone's gonna stare at you. Don't worry, they are. Uh, we all do that, so 
we've all been there. And adjustable spuds, I do have adjustable spud somewhere. This is the one that is just, we're using a lot of bolts that were this size. And this also works for taking down two by fours. If the carpenters put stuff in your way, get rid of it. Uh, sometimes you put it back if it's, you're the priority workers, if you have the whatever uh, allowance to take apart other trades works so that your stuff can fit through because you're the priority workers you can tear it up and you don't have to do nothing just be kind and tell them that you tore up their stuff because you felt like it and they'll be super happy uh, now this works for gripping right around a two by four Got another one up here. and they work great if you're a welder they will have little dingleberries sticking to it so you just peel those off when you're done for the day so different sizes for whatever you're doing there the adjustable ones are great but if you're doing a lot of work and you're moving it around it'll start moving on you so it's not as fast as if you had just one that was that size because it'll start moving you gotta adjust it you gotta play with it and if you're trying to move fast it don't work too well I'm trying to fiddle things like that uh, all the stuff in my bags, it varies from job to job. Sometimes it varies to different phases in the job. So not everything in here is what I would carry for one particular site, or it's just an all around basic. It's just what I have in them. Some of the stuff I've had to take out just because they weren't working for the last job, whatnot. So. One thing that is always very handy that you want to make sure you have on you, whether it's in your safety vest or in your bags, I keep in both, is TP. You want your toilet paper because you don't want to be caught on a site where the guy doesn't come around to clean out the blue rooms. It's a sad day and you can tell who got caught in that. So just regular pair of pliers. I like the nice long ones with some leverage to them because I was working on a lot of strap down stuff and you just get some leverage on it pop it off and away you go don't if you have those long metal straps wrapping your steel or iron up you don't want to be trying cutting it, it don't cut it you got to use your leverage use it near a point on the object itself or the cage and you can pop it off it'll give you much better tearing the torpedo i love torpedoes it's the torpedo level, we just call it the torpedo. They're great because they have a little magnet on them. You just stick it on whatever you're doing and as you're adjusting it, it goes with it. It's aluminum frame, so it don't quite melt unless you touch the plastic part. That way, if you have it on something that's warm, it's been sat out in the sun all day, or if you've been welding on it, it's not gonna hurt it too much. Just don't let it sit there all day on it. Wire is always handy. You strap things down, you can use it for so many different things. You can fix your gear, if you have a tear in it, you can kind of do a little sewing with it. It's very crude, it's just to get you through the day, or if you're trying to strap down stuff just so it don't move while you're on break, or you're just trying to keep it from flying away on high winds, especially up on the high rise. You, it's not fun when things start moving up there. Tape, one thing that's great with some of the tape that other trades will leave lying around is you can use it to wrap around this and you don't need this little strap on here. You wrap all this wire up with the tape and you can basically feed it out because the tape will get dirty on the inside and this will just roll inside like a spool. And you don't have to buy nothing, it's free. Uh, this is a 7 16 little ratchet there, or uh, whatever's. You'll find some odd tools in ironworkers tool bags because they will find one little thing on the job site that they don't have the tool. The company that you're working for might not have it and you have to go buy it. So I have generally most things I would need unless it's a very specialty tool. So I got this from home. I just have it down there. If you're like me and you get extremely bored sometimes while you're waiting the foreman to shut up or something, instead of one of those little fidget spinner things, this is a blue collar fidget spinner because you just screw around with it all day. Gloves. You want an extra pair of gloves. If you're a welder, you 
don't want to be working in your welding gloves all day because you can't do nothing other than welding them just about. You move some steel around, but if you're trying to do more small stuff, you want thinner gloves. They tear up easy, who cares? You get some punks to do stuff for you. That's what they're there for. Speed square, these things come in nice and handy. I'm trying to do angles, this one's pretty beat up. It helps me out a lot. Again, some of y'all will need almost none of this stuff. This is just what I use. I can't say for every job what's gonna be used out there. You're gonna have to talk to your foreman, your other journeymen on site, or your other apprentices on what they do, and ask them what helps them out. Of course, tape measure. Tape measures are great. You gotta have that just about on any site. I keep all kinds of little, I forgot what this thing was called. Crayon, that was easy to remember. Lumber crayons, yes. We use those on steel when we're trying to lay things out. We'll have different colors or on wood if we're trying to mark something that is a certain length on wood and then we'll move it to the metal. We will use lumber crayons. They work great. Sharpies, awesome. You're gonna need those. You're gonna need pencils. And if you sharpen them on both ends, if one end breaks, then you don't have to worry about sharpening the other end. And a pen, at least keep at least one pen on you. Because if you need to make changes to blueprints or you need to make notes for your foreman or for the contractor to know, you want to be able to let them know. Small little flashlight, it's great for setting somewhere. I do have other stuff that will bring down that aren't in the bag. But a small little flashlight that you can have somewhat hooked on here. I don't do it too much because it's just a pain, especially if you have gloves on, to hook it on here. It will work in one of these little spots, but it's hard to get that in and out there when you're wearing gloves all the time. So the last place I was working at, we were having to tear apart a lot of the carpenter stuff because they put it in our way. Some of it was safety stuff, other stuff was just they made very narrow spots for us to get pieces of steel that were minimum half a ton. And we had to really tear up a lot of wood. So I went out, got a cat's paw. Cat's paws are great for tearing out nails. Uh, if you have a beater on site, which is for those, those that don't have knowledge of what a beater is, imagine a sledgehammer head on a smaller handle. It's a small handle for a huge sledgehammer hat. You start beating the crap out of all the wood stuff the carpenters put up. They weren't too happy about it, but not my department, they can complain somewhere else. Cat's paws work great. You get your spud, because we don't have hammers. You put it underneath the nails, prod that critter out. Or just use your spud wrenches to go around the two by fours that they use and you just demolish all their stuff. They won't care. But some of the other stuff that I would heavily recommend taking. I believe I got this at Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight's great for taking uh, for the tools you want to take to work because some of the stuff is incredibly cheap and if it breaks, you're not out too much. We always kid around that the return policy is 30 days or life of the tool, whichever comes first. But no lie, some of their stuff is great. It's a light that you can set on the ground. So if you're working on something on the ceiling or you're working on something on a opposing wall, you set this there, you turn it on, works great. Can't have enough lights when you're working in the dark. Bought this at Harbor Freight, just one of their basic little grinders. I'm not gonna take my Metabo to a job site where someone else can screw it up. This is something that I will hand to one of my apprentices and say, hey, you can use this. Cause if this goes kaputs, I don't care. This was $17.99 when I bought it a while back and it's still running. Why? I don't know. I've used this in the rain. I've used this in ways that should not have been used and it's still going. I love it. I'll probably buy another from Harbor Freight just so that I have a second one for when this one goes kaputs because I am not going to take my Matabo to work. There will be a lot of consequences for whoever screws that one up. So for me, Pencils, they're a little, whatever pencils are great. You sharpen them both ends. Sharpen them with either a pocket knife or 
a box cutter. Now, some of the sites I've been on do not allow knives because it's too dangerous. Uh, if you look at half the tools that you'll be carrying, it could be just as dangerous or more dangerous than a pocket knife. I bought this from either Lowe's or Home Depot. It's essentially a box cutter on one side and a pocket knife on the other. So it's a utility tool. So if your pencil goes kaputs, you just sharpen it, you're good to go. It's also good, one thing I did mention in the comments to the viewer that was asking about this, on some of the sites that you have to walk a while from the designated parking, I've had some sites where it was a minimum half mile from the designated parking to the entrance of the site, especially during COVID when they made you walk ridiculous amounts of distances because they only had one entrance, which was stupid. There's all kinds of freaks out there in the bigger cities. I was working in downtown Los Angeles and there'd be all the crackheads and all those freaks out there doing their stuff. And some of our guys on the site got robbed on the way to site from the same parking lot I was at. So whenever you're walking, your tools are valuable. You don't let nobody take your tools. You have your spud wrench, this thing, you stab, you beat someone over the head over it. You got your little utility tools. Uh, you can have anything to defend yourself with. You don't need to act defenseless just because you don't have something that's a designated self-defense tool. You can even use your vice grips. By the way, vice grips are another great thing to hold tools in place. Your company should have those if you're doing that or if you're in a union, whatever, they should have that. But I prefer carrying my own sometimes because I take care of my tools better than a lot of companies take care of theirs. So if you're walking a lot, I will do another video because that was also in the questions from the viewer on how to get tools from sites, whether it's a rolling tool case, buckets, containers, all kinds of stuff. I will do a different video because I have all kinds of containers that I've taken stuff to different job sites and to Logan School. So that will be in a future video. For a welder, I carry this on me when I need it. This is for holding all my welding rods. Especially if you have to go to an oven somewhere, you want to align this with something so it don't melt. I've never been one to test it to see if it would melt because I don't want to screw up money there. And I just took some baling string that would go around some bales of alfalfa and stuff and I would hook it onto my spud wrench while I'm walking. So it just sits there. I have enough stuff that I carry on there. I'm actually missing my my brush. I don't know where my brush is. I had a little custom um, hook to put on my tool belt. But use this so that you have all your rods with you. You don't want to carry two rods, go back to the oven. Your foreman will be pissed at you and your journeyman will be pissed at you. I've seen it before. We hate that. Don't do that. No. For all you welding students in the welding schools, if you do that, you'll be yelled at. If you're one of my students, you know I'd be the first one to yell at that. More lights. Bought some more of these at Harbor Freight the other day. These things are great. They have a little magnet on them. So they got their little magnet on there. You just hook it on something. You even have a little hook. So if you have to hook it on something, you have to hook it on yourself. Do whatever. You got those. I love the Miller 3M mask. Or is it? Not 3M. 3M is the ones I don't care for. They're the normally have the pink filters not that the color matters it's just it's very weird to have it inside your welding hood it's just huge these things are a lot smaller more confined and they work just as good or better than the other stuff magnets these are things i will not let out of my sight when i'm on a job site these are the little magnets that you use for fabrication i count these every hour on the hour. These will not disappear on me. I love these things, they work great. They're just phenomenal. They will hold your stuff together. If you're using big steel, it's more just a guideline on having those there. That's not gonna hold huge steel in place. But it works if you're doing smaller fabrication stuff, that will hold it there. Earplugs, love my little Container, put earplugs in because you don't want to put that in your belt. It's going to have all kinds of junk on there. 
guys get ear infections from that and it's just gnarly i like the ones with the strings so i can just hang it down for if i'm on break or if i'm trying to hear someone have my earplugs down it helps having that so a lot of guys will think that i'm popping pills a lot on site because it looks like i am but i'm not i'm popping tic tacs because it keeps you awake if you pop in about 10 of those and you put them under your tongue it gets warm really quick and if you're ready to doze off and you're only four hours into a 14 hour day tic tacs help so i'll have tic tacs either in pockets in my bags whatever and i'll just be popping those throughout the day because it helps um, if you like spicy food that will help it doesn't help when you're not on your break one thing i learned if any of you guys are veterans you know the little mres y'all have out there you have the little bottles of tabasco sauce you get that you put it underneath your eyes that keeps you awake it hurts but it keeps you awake it keeps you safe uh, one thing a lot of people don't have that I consider a necessity, I don't have it laid out here, I'm actually changing them out, uh, putting another one together, so it's just some of the basics that I'll talk about for it. On the belt, normally in between my bolt bag, so this will be on the back of me, right in the middle, or I'll have it on site, it's just very cumbersome to have it on the site, I prefer having it on site if I can, but they normally end up getting destroyed to a certain extent is an IFAC. For me, it's a necessity to have it somewhere on me or right near me. Because I've been injured on sites pretty good. I've seen other guys just get totally messed up on sites. And your little first aid kits that you have on a job site, they're not going to help. A band-aid will not put together a split leg. I've had split legs, broken bones, all kinds of stuff. Super glue is great. Super glue is your friend. It will put you back together and you can finish the day. Then you go to the hospital. Uh, one thing that I do have in my IFAC, uh, if it's really warm out and either my nose is getting really chapped so from all the welding, all you sick minds out there, don't laugh. Vaseline helps, but also if you're working in a refinery or a chemical plant, you're putting in steel, you and if you have facial hair you will want to put your vaseline on that if you have to have your mask on because if there's a chemical leak it will go right through your facial hair and your mask isn't going to be worth anything at that point so vaseline containers of that will help it very gooey and sticky at the end of the day you got to get all that out it sucks but it could save your life uh for in uh ifax check bandages not as popular but i have them I like the Israeli bandages, those help. They do a good job from the ones I've used. I've heard there's different variations out there. I've only used the one kind that I know of. It works great. If you go to CVS or Rite Aid or Walgreens, whatever you have that has first aid stuff there, Walmart, they'll have a family bundle of gauze. So it's just all kinds of different shapes of gauze. You can put in puncture wounds, all that fun stuff. Had to do it and it could save your life if you need it. I'd rather have it not need it than need it not have it. So there's different kinds. You can get them in these little boxes. That's not as popular by me. I normally make my own little IFAX because I know what I need because I've had to use some of it before on myself and others. Uh, if you're out in the desert or if you're in open areas, one thing I'll carry is snake bite kits because we do have snakes once in a while in some of those places. A lot of fun there. Went through super glue. Super glue will paste you back together. Some people say it's super toxic. Super glue was invented during the Vietnam War to put the guys back together. So you'll want some of that. Reason I'm going through IFAX because last job site I was on, it had tons of mud. Just lots and lots of mud and it'll get very muddy out there. And when you're crawling through, if you have even heavy duty uh, canvas, it will soak through after a while and it will mess up all your stuff on the inside. So you need something waterproof, but you also need something that's somewhat fire resistant. Sometimes for the IFAX, if you have it in your gang box that's extremely close to you, you don't want to wander far away from it. You can have a clear tubware thing, I want something harder than this. I just have this to carry some of the stuff around. Or you put it in a small backpack or shoulder bag that you can have near you. 
because if it's in your car, nobody's going to go get it. They're going to call 911 and you could bleed out and your fault. It's your responsibility to have your medical stuff for you. Uh, cat tourniquets work great. I uh, never cared for the rat tourniquets, R-A-T, never cared for those. I like the cat ones, C-A-T. Those work great. Sharpies, so you write what time you put it on yourself. You have someone that knows what they're doing, they'll write what time they put it on there. And if you don't know how to use that properly, don't use it. Um, same with any stuff. I will have burn cream in there, been burned very badly on job sites. You'll want a good amount of that. You don't want those little teeny tiny tubes. You want a good heaping helping of it. Because if you can't fix yourself, you gotta wait in pain and agony until someone gets there that can help you. And again, job site, little first aid kits, they got band-aids in there. It's not meant to stop massive bleeding. You want something, little powders that you can pour in there, I forget what they're called, got those in my other bag, and it will stop bleeding pretty well. Put that together. Sometimes you need to put super glue on top of those if they're not the good brands. If you buy the good brand, you don't need to put the super glue on top. So watch some videos or go to a class, learn some of that first aid stuff, and CPR will help on job sites. If someone gets electrocuted, you have to do CPR on them and it happens uh, more often than you might think. So you want to know all that good stuff. These tools, I will have more videos on tools that I use. Again, this is just some of the stuff I'll carry to the last job site. It's different every time. I can't tell you what every single iron worker would need for every single job site, every single application. Some places need specialty tools, some places need hardly any tools. They'll supply everything for you. Must be nice. I do prefer having most of my own tools though, because I take care of them. You look at some of the companies and you wonder how any work gets done, because tools are breaking left and right. They buy junk stuff. You want good tools. So if you're gonna buy something, buy something good and quality, unless it's your journeyman, you're gonna hand off something to an apprentice and if they break it in five ways, that shouldn't even be humanly possible. Get a nice cheap tool. So I think that's it. Nothing else I have out here that I can see, that I can add on to my, if I recall stuff later that I wanted to put in the videos, I will make another one. If y'all have questions on some of the stuff, or if you have questions about specific tools, go and ask those comments. I'll be more than happy to answer those. And to Jean Doe, Congratulations on your new job last Monday. I hope you're enjoying it, and I hope this video helps you out. All right, talk to you later. Have a good one.